www.centreville.com. It's rollback time again at Walmart. Shop in store or online at walmart.ca for thousands of items on rollback right now. Terms and conditions apply. Getting you to work on time and informed. The Andrew Carter Morning Show. News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Now, where do you get your nutrition advice? Was it uh, from your grandmother? From the internet? Friends? Family members? Your doctor? Uh, fact or fiction? Uh, we're going to play with CJAD's resident nutritionist, Leslie Beck. Uh, good morning, Leslie. Good morning, Andrew. Eating eggs will raise cholesterol. Well, I think a lot of people still think that. Um, they, it's true that egg yolks are a very concentrated source of cholesterol. They have a 190 milligrams of cholesterol per yolk. But the truth is that cholesterol in foods, whether it's from eggs or shrimp, whatever it might be, has little or no impact on people's blood cholesterol. And that's why the latest um, iteration of the uh, U.S. Dietary Guidelines, which were released last December, they dropped the statement that's, that used to tell us all the time to limit our intake of dietary cholesterol to 300 milligrams per day. So um, I think the most important thing to do if you do have high blood cholesterol is to cut your intake of saturated fat and, of course, trans fat. Okay. Um, now, this one uh, I know for a fact. This has to be a fact that coffee is dehydrating. Well, the, the truth is that if you regularly drink a cup or two or three cups of coffee a day, caffeine is no more dehydrating than plain water. So it's not a diuretic. And what happens, we know that the body develops a tolerance for caffeine after about three to five days uh, of regular consumption. So this really d diminishes its very weak diuretic effect. So coffee, if you're used to drinking it, it doesn't dehydrate you. Okay. What about this uh, notion that you need eight glasses of water per day? Yeah, we, we often hear that. And it's true, you certainly do. We all have daily requirements for water. You need to replace what your body loses every single day. For men, that's about three liters, 12 to 13 cups of water each day. And women need nine cups of water each day. But everything you drink, excluding alcoholic beverages, count towards your uh, daily water requirements, whether that's, you know, milk in a latte, um, if you, you know, fruit juice, those types of things, they all keep you hydrated. So you don't have to drink eight cups of water on top of everything else you drink. Okay, fact or fiction, eating frequent mini meals uh, speeds up your metabolism. Well, I think, you know, a lot of people think that if you eat five or six small meals of equal size every day, grazing, if you will, um, that's going to help your body burn more calories and fat compared to if you just ate three square meals per day. And however, you know, despite years of research, there's no consensus, consensus, pardon me, on which meal pattern is best for increasing metabolism. Um, and in fact, most studies have shown that your eating frequency has no effect on a person's overall metabolic rate. So I think whether you eat three meals a day or six small ones, you know, when it comes to weight control, it comes down to calories. And I usually recommend that people, you know, eat your three meals and depending on the, the time between them, include a snack or two midday. Okay, true or false, fresh vegetables are more nutritious than frozen. Well, I think when, when, and now is not the time to, you know, we've got all these beautiful in-season vegetables now locally grown that we could be eating fruits and vegetables. But when it's, you know, off-season, the fact is that many frozen vegetables can actually be a better source of vitamins and minerals than the fresh counterparts that, you know, are shipped in from far distances uh, to the supermarket. So I, I would say when fresh produce is out of season and, and often out of your price range, frozen is a very good alternative. And the reason that it, it is because frozen produce has been processed and packaged. That takes place almost immediately after harvest, which locks in nutrients. Okay. Uh, just a side question here mm -hmm. that I had for you. Um, I've been eating a lot of avocados lately. Does that what does that count as? A protein, a fat, a, a fruit, a vegetable? Well, it, technically, it's a fruit, but I count avocados as a fat because they're they're a very very high fat fruit. And so, generally, think about one eighth of an avocado is the equivalent of a teaspoon of oil. Okay, thank but you. You're welcome. Uh, I thought maybe I could count it as a vegetable. 827. You do what you want. That's Leslie Beck, our nutritionist. For more, go to lesliebeck.com. This is Rick Moffat with Sports. Good morning. So, Henrik Stinn.